let us start with modeling of single phase two winding ideal transformer using simulink so let us open the simulink library window and these are the various libraries available we are going to make use of under sim power systems then we have this elements library so under elements library we have linear transformer and multi winding transformer out of these two blocks we are going to make use of this linear transformer block for our simulation so let us first create a new model let us save this model Let us now insert this linear transformer block into our model. So either you can drag and drop or you can right click on this block and click add to linear transformer so that the block will get added to your model window. You can adjust uh, the zoom size by clicking on view menu then if you want you can click on this zoom in. Okay. Now as you can see here there are three windings, one primary winding and then two secondary windings. We are interested in modeling of two winding ideal transformers so it which has got one primary winding and one secondary winding. So we will have to remove this third winding and we can achieve this by changing its properties. So let us double click on this to access its properties and here you can find there is option called three winding transformer so you can disable this untick this so that this third winding will get disappeared now coming to parameters of this transformer as all of us know this power system elements can be modeled either in per unit system or SI units so same is the case with transformer so here is the option whether to go for SI unit system or per unit system. So we will choose SI unit system for the moment. So the first text box represents nominal power and frequency. Now this power is in VA, volt ampere or KVN for larger transformers it is in MVA. So right now we will assume that our transformer is of 1 KVA. So this entry in the matrix would be 1 E3, 1 into 10 to the power 3. That means it is a 1 KVA transformer. We will change the frequency to 50 Hz that's our operating frequency and since our transformer is a two winding transformer and it's ideal one so we are going to set these values primary resistance and leakage reactance to zero because for ideal transformer the values of winding resistance and leakage reactance are respectively zero same is the case with secondary winding so these two values are zero secondary winding resistance and leakage reactance then coming back to the winding one parameter volt and this first parameter represents the voltage so this first entry is actually what is the primary side voltage we are interested in let us assume that our transformer is a step down transformer having primary voltage of 230 volt and corresponding secondary voltage is let us assume that that voltage is 115 volt exactly half of the primary voltage just keep in mind that these values are vrms okay that means these are rms values so we will have to take care while entering the values for ac voltage source that we are going to connect another important parameter that we should look in is this magnetization resistance and inductance now this parameter is going to define whether your transformer is ideal or not because in ideal transformer we assume that the permeability of the transformer core is infinite that means magnetic saturation will not take place and that is possible only if these two values of this magnetization resistance and inductance are infinite so we will assume that these values are infinite in our case that means that becomes ideal transformer very high values let us click on apply and click on ok then let us connect one 
AC voltage source on this primary side because we want we want to see what is the output of the transformer if we apply 230 volt on primary. Ideally, we should get 115 volt on secondary. Let us go to Simulink library. Same power systems. Then we have electrical sources. Click on AC voltage source. Add to linear transformer. And let us connect this voltage source to primary side of the transform this way you can change this AC voltage source value by double clicking on this block you will get another property dialog now here as we can see the voltage required is a peak value so for 230 volt VRMS on primary side the peak value comes out to be around 326 volt and we will keep this phase to zero and let us change the frequency to 50 hertz since it is a 50 hertz transformer apply and then ok you can edit this tag for the transformer this is 230 oblique 115 volt and frequencies 50 hertz We can move this name anywhere we want. Now, let us connect one voltage measurement tool on the secondary side because we are interested in measuring the voltage value. So, go to Simulink library and let us go to measurements under same power systems and here we have voltage measurement that is nothing but our regular voltmeter so we are going to connect this voltage measurement block here the output will be seen on scope so let us go to simulink once again go to main library under sings we have this scope let us save the model and let us change some configuration parameters if we want output to be purely sinusoidal let us change this solver to fit step and let us define the step size or sample time let us assume that the sample time is 1 e minus 3 apply ok can change this stimulation time also let us make it for the moment 0.2 seconds that is sufficient enough for a AC voltage having frequency of 50 cycles per second that means 2 millisecond that is the sample time let us run the simulation now here there is one error now this error as you can see is because of this power GUI block so every time you use any element from sim power systems library the model must contain power GUI block so let us insert the power GUI block from sim power systems library there is a power GUI let's place it over there and again run the simulation double click on the scope you 
can click on this auto scale option so as you can see this is 160 volt approximately and that's the peak value of course so RMS value would be 115 if you want to make your output still sinusoidal you can change the step size go to simulation configuration parameters and let us change the step size go to the power minus 4 click on apply ok and change some scope parameters go to scope parameters and let us disable this history option click on apply ok close the scope window and run the simulation once again that's it now you are getting purely sinusoidal output as you can see so when you apply 230 volt on primary side 230 volt VRMS that means 326 volt peak value you are getting 163 volt approximately as a peak value on output side Okay, frequency remains same because that is the fundamental principle of the transformer it transfers the energy without changing frequency that's it thank you